Now, as I mentioned, there is a lot of IP included with EDK that applies to both Microblaze as well as the PowerPC 440 processor systems. All of this IP is free, and this includes what you see listed on the slide, including bus infrastructure and bridge cores, memory and memory controller cores, debug components, peripherals, arithmetic functions, timers, components for inner processor communication, external peripheral controllers, DMA controllers, PCI cores, well, some of the PCI cores do have a charge associated with them. But as well as, though, is supported a user core template, which allows you to build and customize your own core, your own peripheral. Now, let's have a time to actually look at the PowerPC 440 processor in a bit more detail than we've covered so far. This diagram shows the PowerPC processor that is part of the Vertex 5 FXT device family. It is a newer version of the PowerPC 405 that has been part of the Vertex 4 FX family. The 440 is approximately a third faster than the 405. The 440 is a licensed IBM superscalar processor that can execute multiple instructions per clock cycle. The 440 has twice the cache size of the 405, twice the PLB bandwidth. Note the PLB V46 supports 120 bits of data, while the 405's PLB bus supported only 64 bits. The 440 also supports four times the APU bandwidth. It also has a dedicated data and instruction cache, a memory management unit, and the 440 CPU. The CPU has a fetch queue and an execution unit. The PowerPC also has dedicated fixed interval timer called the FIT, a programmable interval timer called a PIT, and a watchdog timer. Again, a lot of this, these features are very similar to the 405. There's also a dedicated JTAG chain as part of the PowerPC. Remember that the PowerPC is just an ASIC fused into the FPGA, so there are actually two JTAG chains, one for the PowerPC and one for the FPGA. When I say dedicated, I mean that the JTAG chain is separate from the programmable logic. Well, as we'll see, one of the common questions customers have is how do I connect up the two JTAG chains to perform a configuration of the FPGA or to complete software debugging? Well, that's done with the JTAG PPC block component, and it allows you to add this JTAG component when you actually go through the base system builder. Now, like Microblaze, the PowerPC 440 processor works again with the PLB V46 bus standard. The 440 processor core offers the highest performance of any FPGA embedded processor. It also has a hardened processor interconnect structure called the crossbar switch. This enables simpler implementations and simultaneous non-blocking access. The processor also has a dedicated memory interface that reduces bottlenecks on the PLB bus. The 440 has an enhanced APU that supports double precision floating point functions with key operating systems. This facilitates custom hardware acceleration that eliminates software bottlenecks. In the past, a large arithmetic function would have taken many instructions to implement, maybe perhaps like a large multiply and accumulate or other large math function. But now the integration of custom hardware improves the access to custom hardware that you can now add to your 440 system. While it is really unfair to the customer to pour over the gross detail of the PowerPC 440 processor architecture and recording, I did want to mention some of the features that are significantly improved over the PowerPC 405, as well as answer some frequently asked questions about the PowerPC 440. First of all, it's a 32-bit implementation of the PowerPC processor. The 64-bit operations are not supported in this case. The processor does not implement floating point operations, although a floating point unit can be attached through the arithmetic PU, the APU. Support for embedded system applications has been improved with a flexible man memory management component. Multiply and accumulate instructions for computationally intensive applications has already been enhanced. Um, there's a 64-bit time base. There's the FIT timer and the watchdog timers I mentioned. And, of course, this processor is a seven-stage, highly pipelined processor and it supports single cycle, multiply, and multiply and accumulate arithmetic functions. The PowerPC's APU interface allows hardware accelerating co-processing to improve software and hardware co-design efficiency. This is done by having a separate port on the processor to directly access hardware on the FPGA, which would most likely be to route to the DSP slice or, say, to a dedicated block RAM. 
Conceptually, this operates like the fast simplex link that we talked about in the Microblaze REL. In this case, what happened is you would drive out of the processor's port, the APU port that is, you go to some dedicated hardware, do your arithmetic operation, and then feed that data back. And you can do that a lot faster rather than doing it in software, which might take lots and lots of clock cycles to actually complete the arithmetic. Now, integrating this with the DSP Slice resources opens the co-processing space for embedded computing in a fraction of the normal hardware development time. And it's also built into the tools to be done relatively easily. Well, as you probably already know, bus masters have the ability to initiate a transaction and effectively can take control of a bus. Slaves only respond to master bus requests. Bus arbitration is a three-step process in which a device requests to become the master by asserting a bus request signal. The arbitration logic, which is programmable for our customers through EDK, monitors the request and provides a grant signal according to the programmable priority scheme. The requesting master samples the grant line and waits for the bus to be released. The master then initiates a data transaction to a slave. The arbitration mechanisms within EDK can be chosen by the designer, and this includes the use of a fixed priority, round robin, or a hybrid system of your choosing. Well, this is an example of a PowerPC 440 embedded system. The 440 processor supports, supports both a master and two slave PLB buses. This system has two primary buses, a master PLB bus and a slave PLB bus. The MPLB or master PLB allows the PowerPC 440 processor and any master on the slave PLB to be a master and access devices on the MPLB bus. Now this is a little confusing because we're used to having a master PLB bus be a bunch of masters while here it is a pure slave peripheral bus with no master peripherals as you can see from this diagram. The slave PLB bus does not allow the PowerPC 440 to access any of the peripherals on its bus. And frankly, most typically, customers don't put any slave peripherals on that bus, except in this case they did. It is possible, but not necessarily likely. Now, this is unusual because we're used to having the processor be the master of his entire domain. But in this case, that's simply put not the case. So a really good review question would be, how many masters from the system can access the MPLB bus? Well, in this case, the answer is three. The PowerPC 440, the Ethernet controller, as well as the Microblaze soft processor core that you see attached to the slave PLB bus. Another good review question would be, how many masters can access the slaves on the SPLB bus? The answer is two, the Ethernet controller and the Microblaze core. Recall that the PowerPC 440 does not have access or have the ability to be a master on that bus. Note that the Ethernet controller should be drawn to attach to both the master PLB and the slave PLB because sometimes it's a slave component and needs to communicate on that bus. This would be the same with a PCI core. In fact, if you built a similar system with a base system builder, you'd have the ability to add these components and attach them to the buses the way you'd want. Now, a final couple of notes. The slave PLB bus allows other bus masters to access the memory controller interface, the MCI port, based memory and the devices on the MPLB bus. The DMA master can also access the memory controller interface based memory and the devices on the master PLB bus. All additional masters should be placed on the slave PLB bus just like we see in the system so that the MPLB bus will just be purely slave components. You should also note that the MCI port gives 128-bit access to an off-chip memory and that the four DMA ports give 32-bit access to a local link. The DMA is most commonly used to connect to the embedded TMAX inside of the FPGA that may be dedicated in the FPGA. And those are dedicated, of course, in the Vertex 5 and the Vertex 4 FPGAs.